Corinthians chapter 2. Homesick for heaven. Amen. That's me. Are you homesick for heaven? You should be if you're not. <laughs> Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter 2, appreciate the good singing. I like them songs about heaven and about the Lord and seeing Him. and That's a whole lot better than a lot of this junk you see today or hear today. Praise the Lord. All right, Second Corinthians chapter 2, <clears throat> while you're finding your place there, I'm going to preach a different kind of sermon uh, this morning, maybe than what, what we, I normally would do. I'm going to pick one verse here, take one verse and preach out of this verse, and then we're going to run and look at some other places uh, in the Bible, three or four other places, and preach from those passages as well, or those verses as well, rather than taking a whole chapter and a text, if you will, uh, and preach from within the text. We're going to kind of jump around a little bit this morning, and I hope that's uh, you can keep up and follow along. I, I don't see why you couldn't. We won't go real fast. But uh, you'll notice here, notice here one, um, notice one verse. We'll get the verse and then we'll just get to preaching here. Notice 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse number 11. We'll get, we'll get two verses here. Uh, they go together. So we'll get 10 and 11. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ, lest... Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And I won't go into, well, again, we're not, we didn't read it, but the context of the passage here, you had this man uh, back in 1 Corinthians, I think it was 5, somewhere around in there, where this guy is found in, uh, taking his father's wife and the fornication, adultery, and all these things is going on, and Paul gave them instruction on how to deal with him within the church. They do, and it looks like the man gets some things right, and he's giving them some further instruction and commending them uh, somewhat on how they handled this and, and uh, forgiveness and all this kind of stuff. And then he makes that statement there about uh, forgiving and all that there in verse 10. Uh, but I'll say this for him, well, anyway, verse 11, uh, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. So, so uh, forgiveness there is a big deal, big deal within that church, and a lot of times it's a big deal about anywhere, really. But, but he says there, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not Father, ignorant of his devices. So there was inner live. turmoil God there, there was inner live. strife, there was a lot of stuff going on that could really could have really tore that church up. <clears throat> and the devil will use anything he can, he don't care what it is. It could be something as ugly as this instance here, or this circumstance with this man, that's just a nasty, ugly, Father Lord, we uh, know the day and age type thing. It just really looks bad. Amen. But it don't have Lord to. Only, it don't necessarily have to be something I like that. He can use a small thing. Uh, and again, I remember hearing Brother Jim White preach a sermon, and he preached in his church, and it was just cold as ice, and so always nobody would move. Give you the nobody truth. would raise. You always the listen. The Lord loves you. He, you know, give an invitation. You you're lost. You know, raise your hand. Let's stand for prayer. Lord, dealt with you. Spoke to your heart about being lost. Raise your hand. Nobody raise your hand. If you're saved. Uh, raise your hand. Nobody raise your hand. If you're living and breathing, raise your hand. Nobody raise your hand. And come to find out, these people were arguing over, I don't forget what it was, the color of curtains or something. I don't know what it was. It was something real petty and real foolish. So the, but see, all I'm saying is the devil don't care what it is. Uh, he'd get you disgruntled about something, or get you crossways with somebody else or something or whatever it is. Uh, he gets his job, he, he, uh, mission accomplished to him. He doesn't care. Amen. You may and be seated. And he makes a statement there, uh, uh, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. All right? So I want to preach a little bit uh, here just to start about some of the devil's devices. Some of the devil's devices. The devil will use devices against you and me. That's pretty basic. That's pretty elementary. He will use uh, devices against you and me. And he says here that we are not ignorant of his devices. So you shouldn't be ignorant of these things uh, and what they are. And uh, if you're a Bible reader, the Lord will point these things out. You can, you, can, you can spot the devil's hoof print when you see it. 
and you'll recognize his workings, you'll recognize his devices, and so on and so forth. Number one, one of his devices, one of his devices is discouragement. Discouragement. That's a big one, especially for Christians. That's a, that's a big uh, device that the devil will use uh, uh, to, uh, to stop a Christian, to, to knock a Christian out of the race, um, and, and so on and so forth. I guess I should back up here. Let's, let's start with some definitions. What is a device? What is a device? It is that which is formed or designed or invented. Uh, it's a scheme. It's an artificial uh, contrivance. Uh, or stratagem, stratagem. All right, so it's a couple different things. And I'm going to read that a little bit slower. That which is formed or designed, right? He's talking about uh, stratagems. He's talking about schemes. Uh, that which is formed or designed or invented, a scheme can be invented or designed or formed uh, in the mind uh, or in the heart. A stratagem or a strategy can be. But then he makes that statement artificial uh, contravince, and we'll talk about that more in just a minute. But he says here, uh, 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 lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. All right, so the devil can form a strategy against a Christian, a scheme against a Christian, and he can use discouragement to do that. And he will, uh, oftentimes. He will, a lot of times. Think about this for just a minute. In the Bible, New Testament Christianity, Paul said, Paul said this, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall persecution. So it's inevitable. I mean, Peter talks about this, some in his epistles. My beloved, think it not strange when fiery trials shall try you and such and so on and so forth. So as a Christian, you need to be prepared and get ready. You're, you're going to have trouble. Uh, Job says, man is born into trouble as sparks fly upward. Just in general life itself, you're going to have trouble. But as a Christian, you're going to have hello, have a nice day, you're going to have more trouble because you are a Christian. Now, I'm not saying it's always that way or it's all that way. It's not. God, uh, with, the, with those trials and sufferings and all that, God dumps His grace on us. God blesses us with His grace, His strength, His mercy, His presence, His, His uh, whatever you want to call it, His companionship, His camaraderie, His leadership. I mean, He is our Savior. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. Thank God for that. But he said, the servant is not greater than his master. The, the pathway, the road for the New Testament Christian, yes, there's blessings along the way, but there is a cross to be born. Amen. And that's not always pleasant. And the devil will work with that. He will use that against your flesh and say, well, look at that. If God was such a great God, would He be doing this? When actual, in all actuality, you might just be walking through a trial. You might just be bearing your cross at the time, and it might not be pleasant to your flesh. And sometimes, some of that stuff can be, let's face it, uh, it can be a discouragement. It can be a discouragement. So the devil will use discouragement. This, this, this uh, device of the devil is one of his greatest tools. Discouragement. A lot of, there's Christians today that are not in church because they got discouraged. They're not, I say in church, they're just not right with God today because they just got discouraged. And one thing led to another. Uh, secondly, here's another one of the devil's devices. Uh, it's bitterness. It's bitterness. That probably goes without saying, uh, but, but boy, what, what, a, what, a, what a great tool, if you will, a manner of speaking, that the devil uses against Christians, and that is bitterness. I mean, especially if you've been in the race for a while. I'm going to say this. I don't care how long you've been saved and serving Jesus. Uh, the root of bitterness can spring up in you, and the devil will use that bitterness against you. He will, pit, he will pit you against your Savior. He will pit you against your fellow brethren and sisters in the Lord. He will pit you against the Lord and the Holy Spirit. He'll use bitterness to drive a wedge between you and anything that's right, anything that's good. He'll, he'll get you mad at God. He'll get you angry with the Lord. I'll say this. If you're going to serve Jesus Christ, and maybe, maybe, maybe you've never uh, felt like God treated you uh, unfairly 
uh, you just stick with God, eventually down the road you'll see that God is always right. And that God is good. And that God is what he's doing. And sometimes it doesn't make any sense at all in the, in, the, in the circumstance. And God don't give you an answer overnight. He don't give you an answer next week. He may not give you an answer. I am saved by the blood of Keep that root of bitterness cut out of your heart. The devil will use that. And he has ruined many a Christian. God, it's just not fair. It's just not fair. Yeah, I know. Well, see, maybe God's trying to do something with you. That's a hard one. But nonetheless, the devil don't care. He's merciless. And he'll use that bitterness. And he'll use that as a device. Number three, he'll use pride. This is all by way of introduction, by the way. Don't think this is my points. We're not going that fast. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to try to be somewhat short today, believe it or not, because we do have pizza party and all that, and I, want, you know, I know you want time and all that. So. But, but uh, nonetheless, uh, the devil will use pride. Pride. He'll use discouragement. He'll use bitterness. Maybe he can't get you bitter. Maybe he can't get you so discouraged that you will. But boy, maybe he can use pride to just kind of knock you off your... Knock you off your game, so to speak. Knock you uh, uh, out of what you might think of being very spiritual. All right, Abe. Maybe you're proud that you're spiritual. You ain't very spiritual then. Amen. Amen. That pride thing is a tricky business. That thing, Man, that thing that's in all of us, especially as Americans. That, that pride thing, as I said before, I remember Brother Donovan preaching on some of that, and he said, I can remember sitting there in the pew and the, uh, the preacher preaching, and just the Lord got all over him about some stuff, and he walked down the aisle, and he got some things right with the Lord, and as he's standing up, that flesh just kind of stretches itself and says, man, I'm down here getting right with God. Just full of pride. Yeah, that's how this thing is. You have to push it down all the time. You're constantly pushing it back, suppressing it, uh, uh, crucifying it, whatever you want to say, uh, it constantly has to be put down. That ego loves to be stroked. That pride thing, me, me first. Look at what I'm doing. Look at what I've done. I deserve God's blessings. Pride. Pride. You know what got the devil in trouble? Pride. That's what got him in trouble. You know what to get a novice in trouble? Pride. Pride. Boy, that was the best sermon I ever heard. <laughs> I, remember, I remember hearing some of that. Uh, uh, you know, people, people say, well, that's the best sermon I heard of, and this, this, that, and the other. It never came back. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, what, and, and when your flesh will stand back there, and it just, it loves that stuff. Uh, don't look at me funny. That's in all of us. You accomplish something, and I'm not talking about you can't pat somebody on the back and all that, but don't you forget, if you're the guy who achieved something, God used you to do it. All right, he gave you the ability, the ability to do it. He gave you the mind to do it. He gave you the body and the strength and the, all that, to, talent, whatever. He gave that to you. It's God. God that gets the glory for it. Now, don't let that pride thing come in. But it, at the same time, be careful you don't swing the pendulum too far the other way. And I'm just a humble, you know, I'm lower than uh, uh, whatever. And, uh, you, you know, you're always walking around with your head down, slumped shoulders, you know, and just humble, 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 and, just look at me, I'm just, well, you know, I just, you know, I, I can't do anything. I'm just a low-down, sorry, no good for nothing sinner. Well, we all are. But you're a child of God, too. And you've been washed, and you may have been made clean. Okay? So don't walk around here like some monk. Amen? Uh, amen. There's a balance to that thing. The devil will use that stuff. All right? Number four, he'll use, and this is going to sound real maybe uh, uh, insignificant to say, but he, he'll use temptations. And he will, uh, whether it's uh, it tempt you with discouragement, bitterness, pride, whatever. But he'll tempt you with uh, 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 the world. Uh, you'll be tempted of the world. You'll be uh, tempted of your own flesh. You'll be tempted of the lust of the eyes. You'll be tempted with the pride of life. The devil can use all these things. He loves to dangle the carrot in front of the young man. I mean, you read about that business back there in Proverbs 5, 6, and 7, about how he chases the whorish woman as an ox goes straight to the slaughter. I look at that and I go, that's amazing to me. He has no regard for, for nothing, just like, a, just like a stupid wild buck deer. 
he gets a whiff of that female in his nose, and he starts blowing and pawing the ground, and he's coming in. He don't care if there's 55 hunters standing there with 14,000 shotguns. He don't care. He's going to get that woman. Yeah. And he's going to get blowed full of holes, too. Men are the same way. And the right, devil right. knows that. Now, it might not be uh, like Proverbs 5, 6, and 7. It might not be a whorish woman in a physical sense, but it might be something else. It might be something that might not seem like all that bad, but the devil will use that to mess you up. He uses devices. He has devices. One of his devices is temptation. All right, number five. Number five. Uh, the devil use, loves to use this device against you. He'll accuse you to God and God to you and you to the brethren. He's the accuser of the brethren. He loves to bring railing accusation against you and bear false witness against you. Oh, oh, please, church, be careful with that. Be so careful with that. Our tongues are, the Bible has it so true. Uh, the tongue is an unruly evil full of poison, deadly poison. A, a world of iniquity set on fire of hell. Boy, that is so true of our, our tongues at times. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and sometimes a Christian gets sideways with the Lord and maybe has a, a blinding moment or a weak moment or just a stubborn moment, a rebellious moment, and it allows his tongue to be used uh, to cut some Christian up. Man, don't right. do that. Be careful with that. The accuser of the brethren. You're never more like the devil, someone said, than when you lie or when you do that stuff. Now, the devil will do that. He'll accuse God to you. If he was really good, would he be doing this? He'll accuse you to the Lord. Look at what they're doing now. You really, you, and you call that holy and righteous? You're going to save that and secure that and seal that for eternity? That's right. And I'm going to see it through to the day of redemption too. Amen. Thank God for it. But that's one of the devices the devil will use. He'll use deception. He'll use deception. He'll try to deceive you. The devil, listen, the devil is a masterful deceiver. He, listen, I, I, was, I mentioned this, it might have been last week and that kind of thing. You ever thought you was exactly right? You knew you was right? I am 100% right on this. Look, here it is. Bam, 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 bam. And then find out you were wrong. Whether you willfully did it or not, you were deceived. Deception. The devil is a masterful deceiver. And I don't care how spiritual you may think you are, if you get out of that book, you can be deceived by the devil. We have all the time. We have all the time here on Wednesday nights. And I'm looking at a lot of the Wednesday night crowd, but we have all the time. People will raise their hand, pray for, pray for me and my family. Uh, we need wisdom and discernment. Um, guidance on some things. Well, let me tell you something. You better stay in the book. It's great to pray for that. It's great to have other people praying for you for that. I'm not against it. I'm for it and all those kind of things. But uh, I just simply make the prayer request and all that and not spend time in God's book. You better be real careful. All right. Because what will happen is you'll work off of providential circumstances and things happening in your life and it might not be God. Might be the devil. Or unclean spirits, principalities, power, whatever. You've got to keep your nose in that book for direction and for guidance. And let God speak through you through that book. You see, that, that business, and I'm all for watching providential. I'm not talking about signs. I'm talking about providential circumstances when the Lord does work in your life. But He will open doors and close doors. You better find out who's closing and who's opening. And you, listen, that thing has to be in agreement with the will of the Holy Spirit of God and with, the, with, the, with the, uh, God's divine plan according to the Scriptures. And sometimes that's not easily uh, or quickly found out. And I know this, you get outside the Bible, you can be deceived. You can, something will look good, something will look right. I've said it before, and I'll continue to preach it. Sometimes along the pathway of God's will and serving Jesus Christ, you'll come to forks in the road. You've got to make a decision. And sometimes that decision this way looks completely logical. But you know for a fact 
by through whatever means, preaching, the Word of God, prayer, seeking God's face, you know He's going and wanting you to go that direction. And your flesh says, but this makes all the perfect sense in the world. And sometimes God will say, no, you trust me, you go this way. Amen. Step out on faith. And I'm not, again, I'm not talking about some blind thing. But I know this, if you're not in your Bible and you're not in your book, uh, listen, you'll just go the route of the good old boy, just common sense, preacher. I mean, it's just common sense. You know, it might not always be the will of God to take the better paying job. Oh, preacher, come on. Seriously. It might not be. You better pray on it. You better seek the Lord's face on it. Chances, you, good chance you might be deceived. You're raising kids, are you? You better, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff you can be deceived on. All right, we're talking about the devil's devices. He will use deception. Now, <clears throat> again, a definition of the word device, that which is formed or designed. That which is formed or designed, now that can be in the heart or mind, but it may not, doesn't necessarily have to be. That which is formed or designed or invented, a uh, scheme or stratagem or an artificial uh, contrivance. Contrivance. Do you know what a contrivance is? He said artificial contrivance. Now I'm going to take a turn here and, say, and stay with me. Don't fall off the wagon just yet. <laughs> All right? But the word device, whenever it shows up, is more often than not, it shows up in a bad connotation. It's used in a bad way most of the time, almost all of the time, especially in the Bible, and we'll deal with that in just a minute. But most of the time when it shows up, it shows up in a bad sense. He says a device, again, is that which is formed a design or invented, a scheme or a stratagem, or an artificial contrivance. And a contravention is simply this, the act of inventing or, or, or has to do with um, uh, devising or planning. We have a more modern term, if you will, that comes from an 1828 Webster's Dictionary. We have a more modern term today, we like to call it AI instead of AC. Instead of art artificial contravention, we call it artificial intelligence. Contravence is the act, the act of inventing or uh, devising or planning. Have they not built these computers in such a way where they follow algorithmic patterns? Where they're programming this computer to think. Father, we Isn't that what they're trying to do? Isn't that what they do? And what do we call it? Artificial intelligence. And his way is the best way. Let's this thing is directly connected... To a device. <laughs> to a device. Matter of fact, we'll call this, you know what we call that? That's called an electronic what? Device. I hate that thing right there. I do. I, I, I hate that thing right there. If I did not have to have it, I wouldn't. Sometimes I wish I could just get carrier pigeons. I really do. A whole lot more pleasant. That's probably where it should be, right there on the altar. All the time. You say, oh no, you're going to preach on... I am, I'm going to preach on the devil's devices. I'm going to preach on that thing right there. Or whatever else device you may think of. Now I'll say this before I get going here. I don't want to give you the wrong idea. I don't, I, listen, I know the age in which we live. I know what year it is. I know how close we are to Jesus coming. I, I understand all that. I, I, I remember when that thing first came out. Oh, goodness, you're older, older than dirt. I guess, I guess young people have, have never had much of an attention span, but it seems like today it's more like a gnat. I guess they've never had really a concept of time, but it seems to be worse today than it's ever been. And I'm not, I'm not trying to bash the younger generation and all that. I'm not trying to do that. But I am going to preach on the devil's devices. The devil's devices, I believe that's one of them. 
I believe that thing can be something that which has been formed or designed or invented as a scheme or a stratagem or an artificial contrivance or intelligence, whatever you want to call it, and it is, it is opposed to the Word of God. It is against God's Spirit. That stuff, I don't care, you call me weird, whatever you want to, it brings a spirit with it. Now, I know, again, I know where we live. I know the age in which we're at. Listen, we, we shop on these things. We, we work on these things. Literally. We, we chat on these things, do we not? We watch everything on these things. We read on these devices. We get our news off of these devices. We go to school. We can go to school on these devices. Am I not telling the truth? All right? We, we, uh, we get our music from these devices. We look up maps from these devices. We, for crying out loud, we can order our food from these devices. Isn't that, tr isn't that not true? Uh, hey, we bank. We do our banking online on these devices. And I'm not, listen, you do some of that stuff, help yourself. I'm, not, I'm just trying to get you to see something where we have been brought to. We communicate. Well, do we ever communicate on these devices? Why, man, we can even go to church now on these devices. Again, if you ha I'm not telling you that you're wicked if you have a phone. If you have a phone, I'm not telling you that you're wicked, okay? I'm telling you that your phone is wicked. And I'm not going to back up from that at all. I Listen, you say, well, preacher, it's just a machine. I know that. Listen to me. And I'm not going to go through a big bunch of stats and figures this morning, although I could. I'm not going to do that, but I'll throw a few of them out here. The average time spent by an adult on an electronic device, and this sounds low to me, but the average time spent by an adult on an electronic device is two hours and 55 minutes every day. Three hours a day. Solid. Three hours. They might be broken up, whatever. Somewhere along the line, three hours. Now, I'm not talking about if you work, you know, you got a computer, you have to, your job, say, preacher, I just, my job. I, I understand that. Again, I'm not saying you're wicked if you do some of these things. I'm just trying to get you to see the age where we're at. And I'm trying to point out to you some of the devil's devices. The average adult spends two hours, 55 minutes on an electronic device. Our teens today spend seven hours, I said seven, and 22 minutes a day on their electronic device. Some research even says that they'll spend as much as nine hours a day. You've got to sleep somewhere in there. Nine hours a day? Walking around. And then somebody wants to say something. Uh, well, you don't know what this is. You don't know what that is. You don't, I don't care what it is. Okay? I don't want to know what some of that stuff is. Okay? Amen. All right, adults, two hours, 55 minutes. Teens, seven hours, 22 minutes. What they call tweens, tweens, eight years to 12 years old, eight to 12 years old, four hours and 44 minutes a day. An eight-year-old with something like that walking around for four hours, five hours a day? If you ask me, this thing is probably, I'm sure there's some that's more and some that's less. But I'll tell you right now, there ain't no 10-year-old boy in the world should have something like that in his hands. Amen. You can get mad at me. You can say, preacher, I, I don't care what you think about me. You can call me old-fashioned. I could care less. 
You know as well as I do the filth and the slop and the garbage that is so easily accessible with just picking that thing up right there and one or two swipes and bingo. It is so easy. Again, I'm not telling you you're wicked if you have one. But it might rub off on you and you might become pretty wicked. How many times have you looked something up and accidentally hit the wrong button or the wrong word? And you went, oh my soul, oh my word, what in the world? Oh, come on, if you've used it enough, it's everybody in here, right? I've seen it where uh, years, this was years ago, sitting there looking at a screen, me and another man, and he was doing something, and, and all of a sudden, boop, this image popped up, and I'm even going to tell you what it is, and he went, oh, Lord, don't look at this. And I said, okay. And he said, I can't get it to come off. I can't get it to come And he's reached up and unplugged it, and he said, I don't know what's going on with this thing. I'll tell you what happened pushed the wrong button, and it came up just like that. I don't have to go into it, but, well, maybe later. I'll just, I'll just hold on to that, and I'll put that in my back pocket and use that later. But uh, the, the algorithmic patterns in that thing, I'm sure some of you guys, we've got guys here that are technical guys, and they, they know more about this stuff than I do, and that's fine. I, I, more power to you. I could care less about some of this stuff. But, and I do know, I realize it's the day and age in which we live, and I know this, uh, the devil has used it. The devil has done a masterful job to further his agenda, to further his philosophy, to get you out of your Bible, to get you away from God, to make you less spiritual than you were before you had it. The shame of it is that our children growing up today Many of them, many of them, God forbid, God help us, they grow up with it. They don't even know what it's like to be without a phone. They don't know what it's like to be without a computer. You say, I can't imagine. Oh, I can. It's bliss. Amen. All right, devices. Devices in the Bible. You say, you're making a correlation here? That's exactly what I'm doing. And I'm going to tie it straight to, straight to some of these electronic devices. And I might be reaching a little bit, but just let me spiritualize it and just preach a little bit. Devices shows up, or the word device shows up in the scripture in only ten verses. Ten verses it shows up, and two of those places and two of those verses, it's only neutral or good in two verses. That's it. Every other time it shows up, eight other times, it's bad. It's either judgment, or it's wicked, or it's ungodly. Uh, the word devices, plural, shows up in 16 verses. 16 verses throughout the Bible. All 16 of these verses, when the word devices shows up, it's bad. All 16 times. Now listen, again, I'm not trying to make us a bunch of Quakers or a bunch of Amish people, you know, what, can't have no electric lights in here. I'm not saying that. Uh, yes, I do believe the Bible that the devil and electricity, electricity they do go hand in hand. You can't get away from that. So why would it be strange to you for him to be involved with something like this? It's no strange thing at all. The word devices shows up 16 times. Every time it shows up, it's bad. It is connected with uh, imaginations. And every time the word imagination shows up in the Bible, it is wicked. It's wrong. There's no question about it. It's ungodly. It's filthy. Uh, there's no question. You can look at our society today and you can see that. But it shows that it's connected with imaginations. Does it not play on your imaginations? It shows up. It's connected directly with the Antichrist over there in Daniel chapter 11. The Antichrist is going to use this stuff. There ain't no question. It's a great tool. You can, you, how can you argue with that? GPS? Man, what a great thing. Yeah, until they put a chip in you. And they can track your every movement. Bless God, he put no chip in me. Well, whatever. And I agree with you, I'm just saying. What's the difference? You got it in your pocket. 
you got the same thing in your pocket. They just don't have it under your skin, under your right hand or your forehead. <laughs> but he's going to use it. You know what I don't like? I don't like driving down the road and talking about things with my wife and then going home later, maybe the next day or even a couple hours later, pick up my phone and try to look something up and poof, here comes an advertisement about what we've been talking about. You say, you're one of these, uh, call it what you want, I don't care, but they can hear you. Amen. I'm preaching against you. Amen. 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 You say, you're crazy. Might be. We live in crazy times. It's going to, the devil, the Antichrist is going to use this. You, there's no question about that. We could say a lot about that. Uh, uh, so when it shows up, it's connected with imaginations. It's connected with the Antichrist. It's connected with wicked devices. Calls them wicked devices. Wicked devices. You know what it used to be? The old preachers used to preach. Man, they used to preach and rip, stomp, and snort. That wicked TV! It's, un it's, it's filthy! It's ungodly! It'll rob you of your time! Yeah, and it did. And we raised a generation on it. Two or three, maybe. Right? What was the old saying we used to say? They'd sit down there for a 30 minute program, a couple of uh, things in between, a couple commercials, you know, and then on to the next program. It ain't no wonder our kids ain't got no attention span no more. The preacher used to preach that about preaching, preaching on Sunday morning. He'd say, I can't preach past 30 minutes because I lose you. You're, you're accustomed to 30 minute programs. Remember the old preacher saying that? You know what we got nowadays? We got three minute videos. By the thousands, by the millions. Ain't no wonder our kids got attention spans like gnats. Three minute video, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. Let's go, let's go, let's go. No, slow down. Take it easy. Work. This thing will, this thing will rev you up, get you going, 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 going. Next thing you know, ten years are gone. Not only that, Jeremiah says, mine eye affecteth my heart. I am so sick of, and I understand it, and I, and I get it, and I'll probably watch another video or two of somebody, of something funny. You better be careful with some of that stuff, though. Amen. Amen. I am so, I, how'd you learn that? And I know you can Google anything and learn how to do stuff and all that, and I, I get all that, but don't you get, don't you get tired of it? I saw it on a video. I saw it on a video. Well, it's got to be true, because I saw it on a video. Well, it's got to be factual and actual and all because I saw it on the video. Maybe not. You know, some of that stuff can be doctored. And they make it look pretty good. Like you can't tell. I know. I'm old fashioned. That's okay. I don't mind. I'm good with that. Matter of fact, that don't bother me. I'll take that as a compliment. Amen. It's connected, when it shows up, the word devices, with an evil heart. An evil heart. It's connected with man in a negative sense. Man, just man in general, in a negative sense. It's connected with the counsel of the heathen. Can you not get the counsel of the heathen from that? You can get your fill of man right there. You can get your feel of the counsel of the heathen from that right there. Why? You just Google it. You want to know anything, just Google it. Forget about the Bible, just Google it. Just, I mean, it takes too long to look up a reference, you know. Just Google it. But, man, you don't even have to pick it up and punch no more. Just talk to it. Hey, Google. I'm surprised somebody's phone didn't say, go ahead. <laughs> Isn't it something? You see how God's method is? God's method is usually slow and gradual. And we devil's got us going so fast now. Listen, don't get me wrong. I've got a, I've got a, uh, what do you call it? An app on my computer. It's called eSword. How many of you got that? eSword. 
That is, that's a good tool. I mean, you can punch in any, any phrase, anything in the Bible. I punched in device, devices. That's where I got these numbers. It, like this. That's a good tool. It can be used in a good way. But all I'm trying to get you to see is, oh, my soul. There's so much. There's so much destruction and damage that can be done. Lastly, by way of introduction, <laughs> lastly, it's not only connected to imaginations, the Antichrist, wicked devices, an evil heart, man in a negative sense, the counsel of the heathen. It's directly connected to Satan himself. Satan himself. Now, I don't have time, I'm not going to take time to run all these references, but I've looked at every one of them. It's not good. Let's turn to one, Isaiah chapter 32. Are you still with me? Amen. Isaiah chapter 32. I know this is a different kind of sermon for Sunday morning, but here we are. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 32. Let's look at one verse and see what it says. Verse number 7. Isaiah 32, verse number 7. The instruments, isn't that interesting? The instruments, what do they call them? There's an outfit, a company, it used to be, I don't know if they're still there or not. Texas what? They built all kinds of electronic devices. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor, look at this now, with what? With lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. What a verse. You know what I see when I see that? I see a smartphone. I read that verse, I say, well, look at that. Look at my 1611 King James archaic Bible. It's got a smartphone in it. Right there in Isaiah 32, 7. Amen. Now, if you're sitting there and you're getting mad at me, maybe you've got a problem with your smartphone. If you don't, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Or maybe stick it in your back pocket because somebody you know is going to need it. But notice what it says here, a couple things about this verse. The instruments also of the churl are evil. What is this churl? Well, to be specific, a good old 1828 Webster's Dictionary says that churl is a rude and ill-bred man, a rustic or a miser or a countryman, or a laborer. In other words, you get the idea what he is. There's a man in the Bible who was churlish. His name was Nabal. He was a fool is what he was. So, I would, I'm not changing the Bible, but you can make some things interchangeable here. The instruments also of the churl are evil. We have men today, their whole desire is to propagate filthiness. And that is a great tool to do it. Their whole idea is to propagate false doctrine, and that is a great tool to do it. Their whole idea is to propagate and push a, 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 an, an agenda, or a whatever you want to call it, a political agenda, or a lie, or a damnable doctrine of any kind, whether it's political or religious, or social. That's a great tool to use right there. And churlish men and women all across this world are using that to do it. And you know what they do with it when they do it? Look what it says. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor. You see the instruments show up, the instruments, the devices themselves. And what are they doing with it? They're destroying the poor. I don't want to get 
too involved with it this morning unless I get on a rant and all that. But most of these poor black people that are buying into this junk and this stupid propaganda stuff out here ain't got enough sense to see they're being used. They're being used by some of this crowd. It's like I said last week. Have you ever looked up the mission statement for Black Lives Matter? You said, preacher, they're going to put a target on your back. It's probably there anyway. Have you ever read the mission statement? It's garbage. Some of these people have never read it, probably don't even believe half the stuff that's in it. Well, maybe some of them do. I look at it and I say, that's, that's pitiful. Some poor, ignorant uh, soul ain't got enough sense to see that they're being used. They're being used. And they're using that to do it. It's constant 24-7, spewing that garbage, spewing that trash, belching that stuff out, constantly, constantly, constantly. Keep you all worked up. That will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is what? Stayed on thee, not that. Listen, you say, what are we going to do if Trump don't make it in? I don't care. I'm not talking about sticking your head in the sand and all this stuff and whatever you want to vote, vote. I'm not saying either way. I'm, well, I'm just saying, listen, I, I'm not, listen, I, how long have you been alive and how many elections have you seen? More than you care for. You've seen how this thing goes. What do, we, what do we say when Obama got in office? There was Christians all over the country that was wringing their hands. And listen, I'm not, I'm not saying that what he did uh, and he was okay or anything. I'm not saying any of that stuff at all. And I'm not saying you can't vote uh, for the guy that made... Uh, let's, let's just face it, a lot of times we vote for the guy that's going to pad our pocketbook. Boy, I feel like I'm running against a stump here. I'm not saying anti-America and all that. We was talking about this the other day, and I'm Brother Ralph or somebody. Who, listen, as far as I'm concerned, you might think Trump's an American versus what the rest of the crowd, but that guy's a scumbag too. We gave Obama a hard time for this, this, and that, and the other. Uh, listen, if, if Trump would have ran uh, in the, the character uh, that he was, if he would have ran 20, 30 years ago, he'd have never made it. The morality, the, the morals of that man, he'd never made it. Oh, but he's an American. Okay. I'm just saying. I'd rather stick with God and the Bible. Amen. Yeah, okay, pray for that crowd. Put the best guy you think in, and then pray for them that Lord that they'll leave us alone. He said, Well, see, they won't do that if we get Obama They're going to take all our rights away. Well, we'll see. I, I'm getting off the subject. The, some of that stuff, you're not going to stop it. I better get off that. I'm getting off of my devices here. Or the devil's devices. And that's one thing he'll use. But that thing right there, you know what they did with that COVID? They'd have had a hard time doing that if that wasn't around. And I, whether it is or it isn't, we should or shouldn't, immaterial right now. I'm telling you, they'd have had a hard time doing what they're doing now if they didn't have that. Period. Amen. I know people, and you know people. Listen, and I'm not. I understand if someone's got a compromised immune system and they get nervous and worried and a little bit scared. I understand it. I'm not bashing you for it. I'm just saying this: be careful. Turn that stuff off sometime. Make your precautions. Do what you think you need to do to take care of your family. I understand that. I'm not against that. But I know this. You better turn that off somewhere along the line. You better turn the device off somewhere along the line. Because it's 24-7, 24-7, 24-7. The numbers are up. The numbers are up. The numbers are up. I'm just saying. 
And listen, we got folk, and I'm not trying to single anybody out. To wear, I, you want, if y'all want to wear a mask, I don't care. That don't bother me at all if you think that helps and it, 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 it's, it's a deterrent or whatever and it's necessary. Hey Amen! I, I told some people the other day, I was talking on the phone and I said, man, if you want to come to church wear a mask, you can. He said, I can. I said, yeah, I don't care. I'm not going to make fun of you. Nobody's going to make fun of you. Nobody's going to say, well, look at that. No! I'm trying to get you to see something. They use this to just drive and drive and drive and drive the point to where you're like, oh, 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 oh. That's what they do. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, we're going to go on for God. I'm going to get up in the morning, Lord willing, put my shoes on, get dressed and Try to do something for the Lord, live for Him, and hopefully He comes. And if, listen, do you understand what I'm trying to say? This verse here again. The instruments also of the churl are evil. He deviseth wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaketh right. You see, the instruments... You see the lying words. Come to Psalm chapter 10 very quickly. Psalm chapter 10. I got to hurry. Oh, Lord, yes. I said I was going to be short. That's gone out the window. I guess that was lying words. <laughs> Keep the pizza hot. Where's Brother Adam? He must be back there. Keep it hot, brother. Psalm 10. Look at verse 2. For the wicked, excuse me, verse 2, The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. Well, there's some people that are sure taken. All right, let's go to another one. Since we're in Psalm, Psalm 33, you got to hurry. Psalm 33, Psalm 33, verse number 10. I'm there, so I'm going to read Psalm 33, verse 10. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. You say, what do you see there? Well, I see social media there. Of whatever flavor, whatever kind, whatever brand, whatever tag you want to put on it. The devices of the people. You know, you can go on this and it's where all the people are. And we can share our stories and share our pictures and it's the people, the people, the people, the people. You know what you find in the Bible? When all the people get together, it's usually bad. It's usually always bad. The people. But he mentions here the counsel of the heathen. I've already mentioned, uh, can you not get the counsel of the heathen on here? I mean, you can see, the. there's no doubt about it. You don't have to spend much time with that at all, and you'll learn the way of the world. You will learn the way of the world. You will learn how to talk like the world. You will learn how to dress like the world. You will learn how to act like the world. You will learn how to, whether you want to or not, you will begin to think like the world. And then when some uh, preacher like me or somebody else gets up and begins to preach some of this kind of stuff, you're going to kind of go, ooh. Amen. Amen. The counsel of the heathen. I mentioned this before. Might have mentioned it recently. I think I did. Uh, the counsel of the heathen. There's nothing wrong with a tattoo. What's wrong with a tattoo? Why can't I get a tattoo? Because it's the way of the heathen. There's plenty of verses against it. It's the way of the heathen. You're not to mark your body. That's Old Testament. No, that's New Testament. 1 Corinthians 6. Your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're to glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. It's not yours. It's not yours to express yourself. It's not yours to express your feelings and show your artistic abilities. Amen. We could care less. Well, preacher, I got John 3, 16 right there, man. So what? That's what that thing is for right there. I mentioned to you before, someone was talking about their preacher and it had his shirt off and his back and the thing was just completely tatted up. You know, everybody's got to get tatted. That's a mark of the heathen. 
That's a mark of devils. I know how that sounds, but that's a mark of devils. Well, I know so and so, and they're just. I'm just saying we've had devils influencing a culture and a society now for so long. They don't think it's no big deal. Christians and saved and lost people are like, what's the big deal? Well, it's all got them. No, you're to be different. Amen. You're to be different. You're to be clean. Besides that, when you get older, none of that it affects some things that you can do health-wise. It's kind of foolish to do it, number one. Number two, have you ever looked at some of those things on an old man? We joke about it all the time in the car and stuff. I used to work with a guy named Barney. Barney's probably dead now. He was old back then. And he was a military man. He was in the service. And I witnessed to him. Never could get him to get saved and that. But Barney was one of those guys, likable guy and all that kind of But he lost. And uh, been to prison and back and so on and so forth. And, and, you know, and got some things straightened out. But just never did get saved. But he, he's in the service. He's a Marine. You know, I'm a Marine. Okay, amen. Thank you for your service. But he had a, he had a big eagle right there. And it had that little, you know, the, the ticker tape going through it, you know, and all the stuff. You couldn't make anything out of what it was. I mean, it was just a blob, almost. <laughs> Probably a cheap tattoo, or a tattoo artist put it on there anyway. But we'd go by and we'd say, man, where'd you get that buzzard on your arm? <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> they look horrible. You know what that is? That's the way of the heathen. Say, what's wrong with your tattoo preacher? Everything. I'll keep preaching that. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. Thank you. Amen. 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 I'll preach that to your kids. So I don't really want to. I'm going to preach it anyway. Amen. 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 Don't let them. Uh, listen, you young people, you young man, young lady, don't let, nobody, don't let some idiot talk you into doing something stupid like that. Right. You'll regret it later. Right. You will regret it later. Right. Amen. Amen. This, this thing is for God. And if you get married one day, it's for your spouse, and, but God first. And that's it. And you're to glorify God in this thing. Use these things for God. Use, use these things for God. Use that for the Lord. Use these for God. Use these things for God. Amen. I want to say this about the counsel of the heathen. These images and these pictures... I can't go without mentioning the pornography industry in America is out of control. And I'm going to keep preaching it because it's so easy to do and it wouldn't surprise me. And I, 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 I shudder to even think about it and I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I, I, I'm, I've been told I've got to stay within these because of recording. I've got to stay within these uh, things here. <laughs> these speakers, monitors. Stop sign, huh? Do you know something? It wouldn't surprise me at all. In a crowd this size, in the last two weeks, some of you saw some pornography. Boy, that got quiet real quick, didn't it? And if that makes you uncomfortable because you have, then amen. amen. That stuff will eat you alive. Don't, don't even, don't, don't, you're going to play with a fire, you will get burnt. It's not a matter of if, you will get burnt. You will get burnt. Make no mistake about it. See, preacher, this is going to sound, this is going to sound really, you know as well as I do, sometimes the advertising pages, as far as I'm concerned, are considered pornographic. Amen. I remember used to, and probably still have to today, I remember walking through the stores and take my hands and put my, over my boys and say, you ain't looking at that. Stupid magazine rack. Have to figure out a different route to go through the store just to, just to keep from passing by that way. Why? Because they're just boys, man. They're going to want to look. It's a natural desire for the male to want to see the female. Hello, we might as well just put it right there where it is. Isn't that right? Well, you better get a handle on that. You better get a handle on that. That's for that marriage bed. 
and that thing, God will honor that thing, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And it might not be later on, it'll probably be here and now. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. One out of four, one out of four, 25% of girls today have some type of STD. One out of four? Are you kidding me? Nothing wrong with looking, preacher. You're insane. You've lost your mind. Got some stupid teacher over there, and he's going through the thing while the kids are sitting in the classroom, and he's going through his device and pulling the images up. Well, he would never do anything to the kids. Get rid of that sucker. You don't know what he's going to do. You might as well flip a quarter. You might as well and put the gun to your head. You don't know what he's going to do. Well, give him a chance. Not there. Get him out. Amen. Get her out. Amen. Get them all out. Amen. Images. You know as well as I do, you can pick that up, as we've said before, pull something up, and then it gives you the categories across the top. Images. Hit the images, and here they come. One after another. Just as fast as you can swipe them. Oh, don't I, don't I don't want you saying that because my kids are learning. They know already. They, can, they know more about that than you do. Amen. And if they don't, give it time. They will. You better educate yourself a little bit. Amen. Images, when they show up in the Bible, every time they show up, they're wrong. They're wrong! So, well, in the Bible, it's molten images and all. Yeah, but what, is, what, what about over in Ezekiel where he talks about the images portrayed upon the wall? You know what that is? That's pictures. Pictures. You read in Ezekiel 8 about going into the chambers of the imagery. And God says, this is abomination in my sight. This is wickedness. This is evil. Man's heart is desperately wicked. The imagination of his thought are only evil continually, the Bible says. I'm telling you right now, you say, I just can't figure out what's wrong with my marriage. Well, and i, I got to be careful. I know where we're at. We're in a, in a family setting and all that, and people talk about, you know, uh, things just aren't quite right uh, between mom and dad and all that kind of stuff, so they resort, or resort to, and I'm not, they resort to other things. You better watch that stuff. How about getting on your face and getting talking to God and just talk some things out? If you need to, go see a, a counselor, a specialist, someone, a, a Christian specialist, knows what they're doing. Not some, not some stupid pervert that'll throw some, anything in the world at you and just here, look at this for a while. That'll spice things up for you. No, all that does is inflame the flesh! Preacher used to preach it years ago. I still believe it's true. I believe it's 100% true. Listen. You, you, watch all, you look at all these pictures and all this stupid stuff. Do you realize that woman's been airbrushed? Hello? Or he's been airbrushed? They don't really look like that. And the further it goes, if you will, the uglier they get. Amen. We're just putting it right across the plate. They're not beauty queens. Yeah, amen. And you look at that stuff and look at that stuff, and when they get done with them, they throw them away and get, get another. Throw it away and get another simple one. And get another, and throw it away and get another simple one. And the young man sits there, or the young lady sits there, and looks at it, and looks at it, and looks at it, and then never can be involved with a real, normal, natural relationship between a man and a woman. Why? You're twisted. It's perverted. Amen. La La Land. Right. Way off in the imagination somewhere down a rat hole. Amen. And that thing right there, it sure ain't helped nothing. Right. It's made it worse. Right. I could preach on this one for a while. I probably ought to preach on it a while. Be why? Because it's so easy. You say, well, preacher, I'm, I'm up in years. I, no, don't you kid me. So what? You might have more temptation because you ain't got nobody. 
Hello? You ever talk to some of these people working in nursing homes? Sometimes they can be a mess in there. You know what I'm talking about? Hello? Nasty, isn't it? Disgusting, isn't it? Amen. I got to get off this one. Come to Proverbs 1. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be done. Proverbs 1. You have the counsel of the heathen, you have the devices of the people there. The Lord said He's going to make them of none effect. All right, Proverbs 1. I said I was going to preach short, and I'm preaching long. Proverbs chapter 1, notice with me verse 31. Proverbs 1, 31. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. You ever taken, you ever taken a device away from a teenager and watch them? So now, preacher, come on now, come on. Sometimes the kids are like, oh, no, don't, don't, don't. Yeah, I've watched them on more than one occasion. What is it about that when you take that thing away? What is it about it? you take that device off the, off the table, unplug it, and you take it to the curve and you go, there it goes. Mr. Rumpke is the new owner. What is it about, what is it in that kid, that angel, that precious one of yours that just goes pew, 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 bouncing off the walls, acting like not even your child. And you're going, man, what is going on here? Because that stuff's got a pull. And the devil's devices have a draw. And there's a spirit that comes with it. Say what you want, but it's there. And it works, some of that stuff works just along the same lines as we mentioned to you before about a dog getting a treat. <laughs> you, want, you want a biscuit, Fido? <laughs> and he gets all excited, all excited. You give it to him and he chomps it down. And then you go, you want another, you want another biscuit, Fido? <laughs> They're bouncing all over, right? That... That, that mental capacity there, that mental functioning is like an addiction. Matter of fact, it is an addiction. That's what an addiction is. These scientists, these researchers are saying the same, the same pattern, the same mental pattern develops in human beings when it comes to, I'm going to look something up. And then you have that, that rush, if you will. You may not have a rush, but there's endorphins and things released in your brain that go along with looking that thing up and then boom, and then there it is. Oh, and all of a sudden now you need another one. Oh, let's look something else up. And there it is. Or you're sitting there and it's just a constant. You're hooked. You couldn't give up your phone for one week. I'm not talking about other than natural necessary use. You couldn't get up, give it up for one week if you had to. Oh, not me. You say you're challenging me? I'm challenging you right now. A week, day, two days, six hours, I don't know. I just know this. The devil, he used that to get us out of this. Amen. And it's worked. Amen. And God's people are addicted to that when we're supposed to be addicted to this. We're supposed to live by every word and feed on that thing. Man, I can't wait to read my Bible. I can't. I, uh, I missed the time, time to read my Bible. It makes uh, instead of where's my phone? I gotta find my phone. You laugh because you know I'm telling you the truth. You're reading this passage here. He says there they'll be filled with their own ways and filled with their own devices. What are their devices? You can read it down through there. We don't have time to go through it all. Last verse, Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12, I've got to stop. I'm way past. Appreciate your patience. Proverbs 12, look at verse 2. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked 
devices will he condemn. You know what will follow that if you ain't careful? I'm not, not condemnation of the soul if you're saved, obviously not. That thing can wreck you. That thing can destroy you. I'm not talking about this. You, you might not just get off into pornography and you might not do any of that kind of stuff, but you'll spend all your time with some political YouTuber, blogger, instead of, you'll put that down. The distance will create. You might have your favorite guy, favorite woman, favorite whatever. You spend a lot of time chasing all that. And you create distance between you and your Savior. It'll condemn you in the end. Cost you. Cost you your relationship. I No, not your salvation, obviously. But he said there, listen, you, you can either have condemnation or you can have favor. You know what I want? I think you do too. Do we not want favor with God? Do we not want God to look down and smile upon Miltonville Baptist Church and to smile upon our individual homes and our individual lives? Man, I do. That's, what I, that's my prayer. That's what I pray. But I know this. That's got to take a third, fourth place somewhere. It's got to go. I feel like I could preach another 30 minutes, but I won't. I'm serious. This thing is killing us spiritually. It is killing us. What I do, preacher, you better get it in check. You better turn it off. You better figure out something. You better learn how to possess that instead of it possessing you. Let's stand for prayer. I'm done.